hello everyone and welcome to another youtube video so in today's video we are going to be taking a bit of a mathematical approach to the concept of probability so i'll be giving you the formula that we use to calculate the probability of an event i will also talk about the types of events the four types of events that we have on statistics of probability that is either mutually exclusive mutually inclusive dependent events and the independent events for each of those events i'll be giving you the mathematical formulas and the mathematical statement that actually defines them so this is going to be an interesting video so without further ado let's get into the video properly So to make things easier for us, I'll be starting with the probability of the single event. If you want to know more about the concept of single event and the basis of probability, I actually have a video for you, which I'll be linking in the top right corner. So you can just go check that out after watching this video. Let's assume we have an experiment and the sample space of this experiment is actually denoted as S. So the event as a result of this experiment is going to be like, let's say A, B, C, and D. So let's pick an event A. A obviously is an event and it is a subset of the whole sample space and the probability that event A is going to happen is going to be equal to the number of outcome that actually favors event A divided by the size of the sample space. So let's take a more realistic example. Let's assume I decided to roll a die just once, a fair die just once. The sample space of a fair die rolled just once is actually equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then I can ask you this question. What is the probability that an even number is going to show up? Look at the sentence right here, probability that an even number is going to show up. Even number right here is just a single event, it's just one event, hence it is a single event. So the probability that an even number is going to show up when I roll a fair die just once is going to be equal to the number of even numbers that we have in this experiment divided by the size of the sample space. So how many even numbers do we have here? We can see that we have just three even numbers, that is two, four. And six and how many numbers do we have in the sample space in total we have a total of six of them that is one down to six so that means the probability that an even number is going to show up is equals to three divided by six which is equals to one over two or 50 percent or 0 0.5 so that means if you roll a fair die just once the chance of an even number showing up is 50 percent it can either be two four or six so i'll ask a second question right now and i want you to solve it yourself so you can just pause the video write it down and tell me your answer in the comment section so if i that was rolled just once what is the chance that a prime number is going to show up so first thing first we need to know what a prime number is and that a prime number is actually a number that has two factors that is one and itself so in this sample space of rolling a fair die just once, we have 2, which is a prime number, we have 3, which is a prime number, and we have 5, which is also a prime number. 4 is not a prime number, 4 has 3 factors, that is 1, 2, and 4. And 6 is also not a prime number, so we have 3 prime numbers right here. So the probability of getting a prime number is going to be equal to 3 over 6, and that is also equal to 50% or 1 over 2. Did you get the answer right? Please note, 1 is not a prime number. So let's talk about the types of events that we have in statistics and probability and the mathematics behind each of those events. So basically we actually have four events. We have what we call the mutually exclusive event. We have the mutually inclusive event. We have the dependent event and we have the independent event. So straight up, two events are actually said to be mutually exclusive if they cannot coexist, that is they cannot occur at the same time take for example it's not possible for you to be asleep and awake at the same time you are either asleep or you are either awake you can't be asleep and um awake at the same time for mutually exclusive events we don't use the word and because the two events can coexist rather we use the word or meaning either of them actually have to coexist another example you can run a bsc in economics and a bsc in physics at the same time it's either you run a bsc in economics or a bsc in physics we can use the venn diagram to actually represent two mutually exclusive events now the rectangle right here represents the universal set and uh, the circles represents the two sets we are actually talking about so let's say we have event a and we have event b so the circle A represents the event A and the circle B represents the event B. You can see that there is actually no form of intersection between these two events. This is another reason why we call mutually exclusive events. We call them D 
disjoint event. Mathematically, the probability for event A or B is given as P into bracket A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B. We can also decide to write this as P into bracket A union B is equal to the probability of A and probability of B. The next type of event I'll be talking about is what we'll call the mutually inclusive event. And this is the opposite of mutually exclusive event in the sense that two events are actually said to be mutually inclusive if they can coexist that is these two events can actually occur simultaneously they can occur at the same time so that means we can use and the word and to actually relate these two events it's possible for you to be eating and listening to music at the same time the fact that you're listening to music does not stop you from eating and vice versa you can know how to use excel and also know how to use sql the chance that you know how to use excel does not affect the chance of you knowing how to use sql so that means you can know both sql and know excel at the same time the two events can actually coexist in the venn diagram world or in the set theory world the rectangle represents universal set as usual and we can use two circles to represent the two events that we are actually talking about now if you notice for mutually inclusive events there is actually this form of intersection this common area that actually links both events together for two mutually inclusive events the probability of a or b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a and b where probability of a and b is equal to probability of a times probability of b so please know that probability sentence for both the mutually exclusive and the mutually inclusive are actually known as the addition rule some call it the additive rule it's still the same thing and probability of a and b is equal to probability of a times probability of b is actually known as the multiplication rule or the multiplicative rule so let's talk about the concept of dependent and independent events and i'm going to be starting with dependent events so two events are actually dependent on each other if the chance that one of the events occurring is going to affect the chance that the other event is going to occur let's take for example you are playing a game for example candy crush you have to move progressively meaning level one down to level two down to level three down to level four you know those details if you don't pass level two you can't get access to level three if you don't pass level three you can't get access to level four so that means the chance of you having to play level four is dependent on the event of you passing level three or passing level two the event of playing level four is dependent on the chance of you passing level three so that means the two events the chance of one of the events occurring is going to affect the chance that the other event is going to occur so in this case the chance of you getting to level four is going to be affected by the chance whether you pass level three or not if you don't pass level three you can't get to level four if you pass level three you would definitely get to level four so these two events are actually dependent on each other let's come a bit mathematical right here so let's assume we have event a and we have event b and we are stating that these two events are actually dependent on each other so for two events that are actually dependent on each other the probability of a and b is equal to probability of event a times probability of event b given that event a has already occurred that is the chance of event b occurring is affected by the chance of event a occurring this can be rewritten as p into bracket a and b is equal to probability of a times probability of b slash a where probability of b slash a represent probability that event b is actually going to occur given that event a has already occurred now the last event is what we call the independent event so it's just like the opposite of the dependent event in the sense that in this case the chance that one of the events occurring does not and will not affect the chance of the other events occurring so let's say we have two events a and we have events b so probability of a and b is going to be equal to probability of a times probability of b and it's that simple a typical example of an independent event is let's say we have a coin right here on my right hand and then we have a die on my left hand if i flip the coin and either head or tail shows up it's in no way going to affect the event of the die that is being rolled here either one or two or three or four five or six is going to show up here if head shows up here it has no connection on whether two three four five six or even number is going to show up when i wrote this die if you learned something new from this video and you also enjoyed this video 
i would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel you know do you have any question for me or you feel like i missed something please go down to the comment section and you know drop those questions i am looking forward to answering them thanks for making it to the end of this video if you want to learn statistics for data analysis i have a playlist for you the perfect playlist that is going to help you out i'll be linking it right here like up here so you can just check it out we'll see you in the next one bye for now